Diwali is related, amongst other things, with the return of Lord Rama to Ayodhya, which is the moment of hope, of relief. All of you who know the story of Rama, when he was exiled for 14 years, it was the greatest sorrow which the whole citizens of Ayodhya experienced. His father even died out of grief. Like we hear those stories, but if we start to really go into them, like how much that has brought pain to everybody and how long they have suffered, 14 years. And now there's the moment where Lord Rama comes back and new hope is there, joy is there, light is there, new awakening, a new beginning, and that is the day today. And like Guruji said, that day should obviously be every day. That's why he almost refused yesterday to wish us Happy Diwali, because he says, like, I don't want that you think of that today. I want that you remember that every day, the presence of the Lord, the presence of God in your heart, who brings hope, who brings you new awakening, who gives you an uh, anchor, who gives you a support. The refuge in God is the only refuge we have. That as devotees, that might be quite clear, but it is not so obvious if you go out in the world, is it? Like, we chant every day the Charma Shloka, Sarva Dharma Parityaja, Mam Ekam Sharanam Braja. Who's your refuge place? Krishna is your refuge place. God if you, is your refuge place. Nobody and nothing else can give you really hold because nothing in this world will stay. This world is impermanent and everything from this world is impermanent and so it cannot give you lasting relief. And it's such an obvious thing when you start to contemplate about it. When you read the Bhagavad Gita, like in chapter 8, verse 15, he, he mentions this world is what? Dukkalayam. It's a world of misery, suffering. He keeps on repeating chapter 13, verse 9. Somebody who has knowledge has the awareness that this world is faulty. It's a process of birth, death, old age, and illness. Janmam, Mritju, Jaravyadi, Dukkha, Dosha, Anudarshanam. If you know things, if you have knowledge, you know, you won't find what you're looking for in here, in this material world. He carries on in chapter 15, when he speaks about the reversed Ashvata tree. Now the whole creation which comes from God, it has its roots up and it goes into creation. And he describes this tree which is endless and indestructible, this material world which is filled with suffering, the gunas which nourish it, the Vedic rituals, the fruitive actions which are its leaves, the sprouts which are like the sense objects and the desires which come along. And desires, when they bloom, what they do, they make like this tree new roots, new entanglements, and it's going to be eternal and constant suffering because it's just an endless process. One desire creates another one, and desire, like in chapter 3, he says, is the reason for our blindness. That's why we don't know who we are. That's why we are bind in this world. So on and on, he keeps on saying those things to make us aware, don't look for something in this world. Look for an eternal anchor. Look for God. Look for the true self. Be on a spiritual quest, not questions, quest, seek. Who am I? Why am I here? What's the purpose of life? Where do I hold on? What is my anchor point? And that is so, it's such a grace if you have that. Because I just came from Italy and I visited some places, amongst others I passed by my parents' home and it is, it, 
it makes me sad because you see people who suffer because suffering is just normal. The mother who has pain there and the doctors don't know what it is and this doctor says that and the other doctor says that and what do you think? What do I know? <laughs> I can't even fix our heating system, which is a <laughs> very simple system with very little variable, uh, variables. This, this machine is so complex. There's so many options what could go wrong, right? Ah, oh, did you hear your uncle, he removed his kidneys, he got new kidneys, and now the body repulses the kidneys and he has this suffering. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, but what can I do? What should I do? What can you do? Yes, you can go to doctors, yes, you can ask for help and cures and whatever, but will it be a real Healing, will you come to a real result, freed from suffering? Do you think? Like your car, even if you bring it to mechanic, will it get better than when you had it new? No, the more kilometer you drive, the worse it gets. Sooner or later it will just be done, right? The same as this body will be done at some point. You, it, it, won't, it won't get better. When you're 50, you, you will never be in the shape like when you were 20. It's just, it's no, no, no rocket science, no? I visited another friend who, whose mother passed away. And the father, whom I know, he's also a dear friend. He's obviously suffering because he misses his wife after 40 years. She passed away because of cancer. And now... His whole world seems to have crumbled. What is left? I'm retired. Yes, uh, there's the nephews and there's the grandchildren, but you can see emptiness, suffering. And I would like to give you something, and we speak about spirituality, and we speak about the love which eternally will remain. But if you haven't lived it, if you don't have a spiritual openness and live a spiritual life, it's somewhere there. It's not really something which you apply, isn't it? The moment you see a TV switched on, what do you see? Oh, the war between Russia and Ukraine, and now in Gaza, between Israel and Palestine, and, and then this, and then the refugees which came here, and suffering, suffering, suffering from all sides. There's just problems which seem to be unsolvable on a big scale, no? Like nobody has the solution, otherwise we would use the solution. We have better solutions or worse solutions, but there's not the solution. In other places there's rains, like in Italy there was now also heavy rains and floods, cities flooded, houses destroyed. Again, people suffer. <laughs> and that's what the scriptures say, that there's three types of suffering. There's the adiatmic dukkha, which is the pain which comes from body and mind, which comes from this. You get ill, you have mental illness, you have all kinds of bodily and mental illnesses. You have the Adibuddha Dukkha, which is what is inflicted by other external influences, other people. Your boss is very harsh with you. You are in a war zone. It's not your fault, but people around you make your life difficult. And the Adideva Dukkha, which is related with, with nature, with destiny, like natural catastrophes. It's everywhere, all the time happening. It's only, we only think about it when it's happening to us. I just spoke yesterday with a devotee, I was like thinking, my God, I think such a lucky and good life like I had, it's a very rare thing. Like 40 something years, no hunger, no 
war, no, pro no real problems. And I think most of us had such a life. And still, modern illness, depression, burnout, complaining, suffering. Where is the solution? Where do we find a real anchor? Mam e kam sharanam raja. What is the real solution? And the real solution is only if we have God in our life, if we realize that we are an eternal Atma, that He is our refuge place, that He will save us, that He will take care of us. That's the whole purpose, no, of, when you, of yoga. When you take chapter 6 of the Bhagavad Gita in verse 23, he says, the whole purpose of yoga is the deliverance of suffering. But that is connected with, like the cutting of this tree, of this creation tree. How you cut it down? With detachment. Detaching. And attaching, like Guruji says, the world is, is combined by two things. You have to detach from this world and attach yourself to the feet of God. He becomes your refuge place. Mam e kam sharanam braja. Seek first the kingdom of God. Everything else will be given to you. Somebody else has said. You might know him. Right? It's the same message. If we have God, we have everything. And Diwali is... Related to that, to that light, light which asatoma satkamaya, yeah, tamasorma jyotirgamaya, from darkness to light. The essence of the Vedas is in that asatoma satkamaya, lead me from ignorance to truth, tamasorma jyotirgamaya, from darkness to light, mrityorma amritam gamaya, from death to eternal life. Where can you find that? Only Mam Ekam Sharanam Raja. Only when you hold on to the Lord, when you detach from this world and when you attach yourself to Him, when you remember Him, when we are here, now when all the all the tools which Guruji gives us, all the practices which He gives us is only for that. Remember who you are, remember why you're here, remember what's the purpose, remember who will give you hold? Who is your anchor? What is your anchor? It's not your wife, not your husband, not your money, not your house, not your child, not your status. All of those things, they come and go. There's only one thing which is, was and will always be. And that is your eternal relationship with him. He was, will and is always so the whole spiritual path and especially Diwali is for that to invite the Divine Mother to divine Mahalakshmi who is seated at his feet who intercedes on our behalf who takes care of the children who brings us to him who says hey this one he really wants you he really only wants you. Be merciful. That's why we are here, to ask the Divine Mother, to ask Mahalakshmi, please. Make me only want Him. Yeah, you see, it's not that we only want Him, because if we would only want Him, we would probably be painted somewhere on these walls. <laughs> But as we don't only want him, we are still sitting here trying to be at some point maybe on those walls. So wanting to want him is also a good thing. We start somewhere. I long for the longing. I long for the longing. I know the longing is the solution. So I need to long for it. Because then everything becomes easy. Then I don't need to battle anymore. Oh, should I do this or should I do that? It will be automatic that I will do the right thing. <laughs> that I will think the right thing. That I will speak the right thing. As long as that is not the case, 
I will have to work for it with determination, with detachment, with constant practice. All the things which Krishna says, which Guruji says repeatedly. And I think that is just a very realistic viewpoint for anybody, but also for the spiritual path, because sometimes we think spirituality must be always just beautiful, but we enter in the same game of like wanting it to be in a certain way, and just instead of just accepting what is and knowing that it's part of it, if it's good or if it's not good. This whole play of raga and dvesha, of likes and dislikes, of attraction and aversion, we should not be get entangled in that. You should only have one desire. That is to attain Him. And today is that day where Rama has come back to Ayodhya, where He has removed all this long suffering of all the people, this long longing for Him. Finally He is back. Mahalakshmi, Sita has come back. No, you know the image of the Ramayana. Sita is like your, your heart, your soul, Rama, God. Ravana has stolen away Sita. Rama, Ravana, the mind, the ego has stolen Sita, the heart, the soul from God. And now Lakshman, who's your consciousness, who helps you, who's always by your side, and Hanuman, which is courage and power and determination, they will go to, to release Sita again. And finally, Sita is released. Ravana is killed. The ego, the mind, all the negativity is removed. And now Rama comes back and there's great celebration, great joy, great light, great happiness, an eternal refuge place, which is always there where we can always dock on. And in that moment, we are really getting to a point that anything can happen in our life. Because like the, Krishna, like the Bhagavad Gita ends, where there's Krishna, the Lord of Yoga, and where there's Arjuna, all of us, who bears the bow, who is ready to fight, who is ready to do his or her part, there will always be victory, success, bliss. There will always be victory. So we only have to do our part because the point, what he says, is Arjuna who bears the bow. It is not Arjuna of chapter 1 which puts down the bow and winds around and is the victim and has the problems. It is Arjuna who is ready to do what is needed to do, to persevere, to be determined, to do its practice. If we are like that, and we know we have Krishna with us, we have Guruji with us, we have Rama with us, then what can really bother us? Jai Gurudev.